Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Rat Queens to the Slaughter. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will show the first couple of rounds, and then I'll fast forward until the big bad comes out. Now, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of those come with perks, like watching some videos early and advertisement free, as well as voting on which of those videos are made. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. The other thing I'd like to mention is the fact that I'm filming with a prototype version of the game today, so the art and components that you see here will not necessarily match those in the final version. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Now, this is a fully cooperative experience, and each of the players will be controlling a single Rat Queen, and in this game, we are trying to fend off a series of monsters that are invading Palisade, which is our home. Now, within each of the game's rounds, monsters are going to be entering all of these gates from that deck of cards, and then each of the players are going to use the cards that they have in their hand in order to move their Rat Queen to different gates. They can also use these cards to perform various actions, which will let them roll dice to do damage to those monsters, and if you do enough damage to monsters, you will defeat them. When monsters are defeated, players will gain coins, and at the end of each round, we can spend these coins in order to upgrade our deck. We can purchase any of these upgrade cards and put it on top of our deck, and then we permanently remove a card from our discard pile to make sure we keep the same number of cards overall in our decks. Now at the end of the round, every monster that is not defeated will invade the palisade, and once a certain number of monsters have invaded, or once we have gone through this entire monster deck, at that point we will have a big bad monster attack. Each of these has their own specific board with special actions and attributes, and in order to win the game, we have to collectively do enough damage to defeat the big bad that ends up attacking palisade. Now that being said, the way we lose the game is if we do not defeat the big bad in time. When we go to fight them, the amount of time we will have to defeat them will depend on the number of monsters that we defeated in the first chapters of the game, which means the more monsters we defeat, the more time we will have to defeat the big bad that ends up invading during the final chapter of the game. Now, I will describe the details of how all of these things work while we are playing the game, and I think on that note, it is time to start the game. Now, normally in these videos, I take on the role of one of the players, but since this is a fully cooperative game, we will be controlling all of them together. So, let's now start the game with the very first round. Now, every round is split up into four phases. The first is a preparation phase, then there is a monster phase, after that there is a player phase, and we will end each round with a regroup phase before we move into the next round of the game. Now, we are going to start this first round of the game with the preparation phase, and the first thing that we have to do for that is draw one monster from the top of this deck and place it onto each of these four gates out here on the board. Now, you'll notice that this says easy monsters on the top, and we have shuffled all of the easy monsters and then placed them on top of medium monsters, and those have gone on top of hard monsters. So as we go deeper into the game, the monsters that we fight are going to increase in overall difficulty. So let's deal one card to each of these gates. And it looks like we found a goblin at gate one. In gate two, there is an assassin. At gate three, there is a cultist. And in gate four, there is an imp. After drawing monsters, it's now time for each of the Rat Queens to simultaneously draw their hand of cards for this round. Now, each player is going to draw three cards from the top of their deck, and then I'm going to place these face up. Players are allowed to discuss all of their options as much as they want, and you can show your partners the cards that you have in your hand. Now, at this point, we are still in the preparation phase, and if any players drew cards that specifically say preparation on them, then now is the time to use those cards. With that in mind, let's now have D use this card here, which is called I've Got Your Back. Now, down below at the bottom, it says that until the end of this round, queens at D's gate who take damage suffer one damage less. In addition to that, this says that D can immediately move, then they are going to drop a friendship token, and then D can draw another card from the top of their deck. So, let's go ahead and start with that movement. So let's focus out here to Palisade, and the first thing that happens is D has to move. When it comes to these actions, we always go from the left to the right, and when you move your Rat Queen, they are going to go to the gate that is on the left or the right from their current gate. It's worth noting that gates 1 and 4 are not adjacent, and in this case, I think D wants to head over here to gate number 4. That does mean they are getting farther away from Hannah over here, but this effect, which is going to stop damage coming in, will now possibly stop some of the damage that Violet could take later on in this round. 
After that, this card says that D can place a friendship token down into their current gate. Now, this token is going to go over here into that gate area, and these can be activated by other Rat Queens later on in this round, and I'll talk about the details of how that works soon. Now, after that, the final thing that happens is D can draw one more card from the top of her deck. So she can draw this card here, and then the card that was used can be put to the discard pile, although we do have to remember that for the rest of the round, queens at D's gate will take one damage less than normal. Now it looks like there is one other card that says preparation, and that is over here in Violet's hand, and this is Shield Maiden. Now that says that until the end of the round, all queens at Violet's gate have plus one armor. Now this also says that Violet can either add one card to her hand, or she can move once out on the board. And I think at this point, her position is pretty good, so let's have her draw one more card, and that would be placed directly into her hand. Well, the preparation phase is over, so now we can move into the monster phase, and the way this works is starting at gate 1 and proceeding over to gate 4, every monster is going to attack the rat queens that are at that same gate. So this goblin over here is going to attack Hana, and the way this attack works is that monster is going to roll a number of attack dice equal to its strength, and the strength number is listed at the top center of the card. That means this goblin is going to roll one die... And as you can see, these dice show a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, as well as this rat queen symbol. Now, every time this rat symbol shows up, that is a success for the queens, which means if this happens when a monster attacks, then it is a miss. And it means if this happens when a rat queen is attacking, then it's a guaranteed hit. Now, at this point, we can have the goblin attack, and it looks like they got a 4. As you can see, the goblin is in the same gate as Hana. So we should look over here to Hana's board. Now, in order for this to do a damage, the attack value must be greater than Hana's current armor. Now, the armor is tracked up here at the top of the board, and the armor value will be the lowest value that's currently showing. As you can see, the lowest value is a 1, which means in order for Hana to take a damage, this needed to roll higher than a 1, so a 2, 3, or a 4. In this case, obviously, 4 is greater than 1, so unfortunately, Hana is going to take 1 damage from this attack. And we can track that by taking a wound token and placing it over here onto Hana's board. As you can see, Hana has 7 health, and if at any point Hana has 7 or more wounds, then she will be knocked down, and then we will suffer some negative penalties that I will describe later on. Fortunately, if you get knocked down, you can get right back up again and continue playing as the game continues on. Well, that goblin is done attacking, and then the assassin and cultist are not going to attack, because attacks only happen if there are at least one rat queen at those specific gates. Now over here, this imp is going to attack both Violet as well as D. And remember, uh, Violet has a card played, which increases the armor of all queens at that gate. And D has a card played that lowers the amount of damage taken by all queens at that gate. Now it seems like it would have been better to have one of these two rat queens over here with Hana. But unfortunately, Hana was too far away, and we weren't able to make that happen. Either way, this imp is now going to roll one die, and it looks like it got a three. Now this attack is going to hit all of the Rat Queens at that area, and over here we can see Violet has an armor level of 1, but remember, this Shield Maiden increases that by 1, so it is up to 2. Now this 3 is higher than 2, so that means Violet should take a damage, but this I've Got Your Back card lowers the amount of damage taken by 1, so that means that 1 damage will be brought to a 0, and the same thing will happen over here for D, so they will also not take any damage. At this point, every monster who needed to attack has, which means the monster phase is over, and now we can move into the action phase of the round. In this phase, players are going to use the cards that they have in their hand to do the effects that show up on them, and during this phase, there is no structure for our turns. We can simply play cards in the order that makes the most sense for us as a group. After considering our options, I think the first thing that we should do is have Hana use this versatile card here. As you can see at the bottom, it says we can choose one. We can either do a strength-based attack, or we could activate Hana's special ability. When we focus down here, you can see that sword icon matches up with the strength, and the pentagon icon matches up with the special. Now, I think let's start things off big with this special ability. It is called Envocar Incendius, and it says we can now roll X dice. Now, X is going to be equal to the number of dice showing up on this action. This shows one, which means we are going to do Envocar Incendius with one die. Now, after we roll that die, we are going to deal one damage to each monster and queen at the gate matching the number that is rolled. And if we roll the rat side on the die, we get to choose the gate, and this ability will never do damage to Hana. 
Now, I figure this is a good time to do that because we might roll a four, and if we do, then this I've Got Your Back card is going to lower the damage suffered by all queens at that gate with D by one, so that means if it hits four, that's going to be just fine. So let's go ahead and roll that one die, and Envocar Incendius is going to hit gate number two. That is right over here, and now every single monster that is at this gate is going to take one damage, so we can take a wound token and place it on top of the monster, and if the number of wounds now meets or exceeds the health total of that monster, then it would be defeated, and we would discard the card. In this case, the assassin has two health and has suffered one damage, so one more damage will defeat it. Well, that was so much fun, I think let's do it again. Over here, Hana has the Envocar Rafika card, and let's use this, and now the card says we can do these three things in any order of our choice. Well, let's cast Envocar Incendius before we do the other things. That is a random effect due to the chaotic energy that Hana harnesses, and based off of what happens here, we can continue to plan for the rest of the round. Just like the first card, this has a single die icon showing, so that means we are going to roll one die, and then at the matching gate, everything will take one damage. So let's see where they hit, and it's gate number three. So that's going to do one damage to this cultist. After that, Hana has the option of moving if she wants to, and I think let's do it. Let's have her move over to gate number two. Now, I do want to mention that while this icon is one of the main ways we can move, another way that you can move in the game is by discarding any card that you have in your hand to simply move once and do nothing else that it says on the card. Now, speaking of cards, the last thing that this card says is we have to add one friendship token down of Hana's onto the gate that she is currently at, so we can place this right over here. Well, at this point, I think it's time for Violet to do something. In particular, let's use this Wholesale Slaughter card. As you can see, this card has the special ability icon, and for Violet, that's down here, and it says they can roll two dice, and then for each four or rat queen side that they roll, they are going to deal X damage to one monster at Violet's gate. Now the X applies to the number on this card, and this shows a two wound on it, so that means we can roll two dice, and for every four or rat queen side, this will do two damage to a monster at Violet's gate. Well, currently there's one monster at Violet's Gate, and it has two health, so that means we just need one of these dice to hit, and each die has a one-third chance of making that happen, and it looks like we got it. Now, this is going to be a hit, which means this Wholesale Slaughter will now do two damage, and this is a miss, but that is just fine. Two damage is enough to immediately defeat this imp, and that means we are going to discard it, and it means that the reward of two coins will now be doled out to the queens at that specific gate. Now, the player who defeated this monster decides who gets the coins, and they can split this up as much as they want to, so two could go to one or the other of the queens, or each of them could gain one. After thinking this through, I think let's just split this up evenly, so we are going to give one coin to D, and one coin will go back to Violet. We can place these coins into each player's area, and we are going to use these coins to upgrade our deck by purchasing cards from our own individual markets later on in the round, and I'll describe the details of how that works once we reach that point. Well, that wholesale slaughter card is now done. At this point, I think let's have D use one of her cards, and that is going to be Hang On Love. This says that they can place a friendship token down, and normally these go into the gate where that Rat Queen currently is, but this card says this can be placed onto any gate, and they also will gain a movement action. Now, I haven't yet described why we care about these friendship tokens, and I will get to that soon. Trust me, these are great. Now, I think let's put this over here onto gate number two, and then we can have D move into an adjacent gate, which is going to be gate number three. After that, let's have Violet perform a leap attack. This will let them perform these three actions in any order. That is going to be a strength-based attack. They will also place a friendship token down in their current gate, and they will get a movement. Now, they are going to move first, and currently their only option is to go from four over here to three, and then they are going to place one of their own friendship tokens down into that gate. At this point, the final thing that they can do is a strength-based attack, so let's see how that works. Let's focus on Violet's board, and as you can see, there is a strength row on it, as well as all of the other Rat Queen boards. Now, this is going to be a strength attack where they roll one die because it has one die icon showing. And then, in order for this to successfully do one damage, the die roll plus the lowest modifier showing has to be equal to or greater than the armor of a monster they are attacking at their current gate. Now, with this roll, if they get a Rat Queen side, then that is a guaranteed hit, and otherwise, they are simply going to add plus one to any number they get. 
When we focus out, you'll notice that both Hana and D have a starting plus modifier of zero. So as you can see, Violet is a little bit better at strength-based combat than the rest of the queens at the start of the game. So let's focus back over here, and the only monster they can target at their gate is the Cultist, and it has an armor value of 2. That means with this attack, they need to get a 2 or greater. Again, it's worth noting that when the monsters attack the Rat Queens, they need to exceed the Rat Queen's armor in order to do damage, but the Rat Queens attacking monsters just need to meet that number or exceed it to do 1 damage. So we need a 2, and remember Violet gets a plus 1 to this roll, and they got a 0. So 0 plus 1 is going to be 1, and unfortunately that does not get up to 2, so the strength attack is not going to do damage. Now if they had rolled any other side on this die, then that would have been enough to have this be successful, and a successful attack does 1 damage unless stated otherwise. Well, at this point we have done quite a bit in the round, and we still have many more cards to play. Now, Hana over here has decided instead of playing another card, they would like to do a friendship action. During each of the action rounds, every single Rat Queen can perform exactly one friendship action, and you can only do this if there is a friendship token of a different Rat Queen currently at your gate. As you can see, Hana is at gate number two, and there is a friendship token over here for D, and with that in mind, Hana is going to activate this friendship token. Now what that means is immediately D is going to move from wherever they are on the board to this gate, and then after that, the Rat Queen on that token will perform her friendship action. The activated friendship token is associated with D, and this action is Healing Touch. This says that D is going to roll three dice, and for every four or Rat Queen side they roll, one Queen at D's gate will heal twice. So we can roll three dice... And it looks like we got a single four or a rat queen side. So that means that this is going to heal one queen for two health. Currently, D is at Hana's gate because, of course, Hana brought D over here with this friendship action. Well, Hana does have one wound over here, so D can use that healing touch to heal up to two wounds off. So this one goes away, and now Hana is back up to full health. The final part of a friendship action involves the player who activated it taking that token from the board, and they can then place it onto the leftmost open spot on either their armor row or their strength row. By doing that, they are going to potentially alter the modifiers they have for strength-based attacks or for being attacked by opponents. And considering Hana has the lowest amount of health of all of us, I think it makes sense to place this over here. That covered up the 1, but 1 is still the lowest value. However, the next time Hana places a friendship token here, then her armor value is going to go up to 2. So as you can see, by performing these friendship actions, the Rat Queens will become stronger for that friendship. Now once again, it's important to note that each Rat Queen can perform at most one friendship action per round, so Hana will not take any more of these within this round, but obviously can gain more in the future. The last thing I'd like to point out is that if you are able to place three friendship tokens on your armor row, then you will unlock a special benefit that is different for each of the Rat Queens. For Hana, that says that her special power will no longer deal damage to queens. Remember, that special power is Envocar Incendius, which damages a random gate and also hits queens. So if three friendship tokens are on here, then that damage will only ever hit monsters instead of her partners. While we're talking about these special abilities, let's look over here to Violet. This says that once she has three friendship tokens on her armor row, then when a monster attacks or deals damage to Violet, that monster will take one damage back. The final bonus is over here for D, and that says once she has three friendship tokens on her armor row, she is going to draw four cards and then discard one of them at the start of each round, instead of just drawing three. Now obviously it's great to gain access to these special effects, but of course it is also good to use your friendship to increase your strength, because that will increase the odds that you do damage to the monsters that you are fighting. I think at this point let's now have Hana do another action, and that will be using this last card. It says Chaos Cards, and down below it says they can choose any queen, and they can draw two cards and then discard one random card. Now they have decided to target to themselves, that lets them draw two cards from the top of their deck, and then randomly discard one of them, and that is going to be... let me handle it. Uh, this one would have let them place a friendship token down and then move. The other card they have is Leap Attack. Ooh, this one actually lets them drop a friendship token, move, and do a strength-based attack, and they can perform these in any order, whereas normally you have to go from left to right. You know what? I think let's use Leap Attack right now. We can begin with the move, because again, we could do these in any order. We can have Hana go to gate 1. Then let's have Hana drop a friendship token down at gate 1, so she has a token at 1 and 2. And then let's have Hana do a strength-based attack. 
As you can see, this is going to let her roll one die, and her modifier on the strength track is currently plus zero, and we can see the only monster in this gate is the goblin. Now, that has an armor value of one, so that means Hana needs to get a one or better in order to do one damage. This goblin has a low amount of armor, but it does have a high amount of health. We are going to have to do three wounds in order to defeat it. So, let's see how Hana does, and... It's a one. All right, there we go. Uh, one plus zero is going to be one, and that matches the armor of this goblin. Since a rat queen is attacking, it just has to match it. So that is going to do one damage to the goblin. After that, I think let's come over here to D and have her use Lover's Bite. This shows the special ability icon, which means D can use this one, which is called Lover's Bite. And let's now take a look at the details. That says they can roll X dice, and X is going to equal the number of dice showing up on the card. So in this case, that is going to be one die. And then if at least one of the dice rolled equals or exceeds the armor value of a monster at your gate, then you deal one damage to each monster at D's gate, and then one damage to each monster at an adjacent gate. Currently, D is at gate two, and the monster there does have an armor value of three. So that means she needs to get a three, a four, or this rat queen side in order to be successful. Well, let's see how she does, and it's a two. Dang, two is not enough to meet or exceed that, so unfortunately, this Lover's Bite attack is not going to be successful. If it had been, we could have done one damage here, which would have defeated this, and then we could have done one damage to everything in an adjacent gate, which would have potentially defeated that monster over there, but in this case, it looks like the dice weren't with us. Well, at this point, we have two cards left, and let's go ahead and have Violet use Eat Metal. She could use this to do a strength-based attack over here, but I think instead, let's use this one to move. Remember, every card can be discarded to gain one movement, and that will let Violet move over here, where there is a Hana friendship token. That means Violet can now perform a friendship action by taking this token, and then Hana's friendship action will activate. That's called Necreus Corvin Rouse, and it says that we can roll a number of dice equal to the attack strength of the monster on top of the monster discard pile. If at least one of those dice are a four or the rat queen side, then two damage will be dealt to a monster at Hana's gate. Now this friendship action is happening over here, which means the first thing that happens is Hana is going to move on to gate number two, and then to perform this attack, we can see the monster at the top of the discard is this imp. It has a strength of one, which means Hana is going to roll one die, and if she gets the Rat Queen or the four, then this will deal two damage to a monster at her gate. So let's see how we do, and we got a four. Nice. That is going to deal the two damage, and we only needed one damage to defeat this assassin, so that means it is gone. We can discard it, and then three coins can be divvied up amongst Violet and Hana. After considering the options, I think let's give Violet two of these coins, and then we'll give the other one to Hana. Lastly, we can place this friendship token down onto Violet's board, and if we go here, that has an immediate effect of increasing Violet's armor to two, whereas going down here does not have an immediate effect yet, but of course if we put another one there in the next round, then all of Violet's attacks will be at plus two, which is certainly a good thing. Violet does quite a few of those strength-based attacks. That being said, taking less damage is certainly a good thing, and it would be great to get up to Violet's special up here, which forces damage on monsters when they damage her, so I think let's place this up onto the armor row. Well, at this point, there's a card over here, and D is the only Rat Queen to not perform a friendship action yet, and if it's possible, I really do think we should, considering we can do only one per round. And of course, adding these friendship tokens down really strengthens the Queens as we go throughout the game. With that in mind, we can see that there is a friendship token here at gate one, which is where D is, so I think let's have D perform a friendship action, and this is another one of Hana's. That means Hana is going to head back over here to gate one, and then perform the Necreus Corvin Rouse effect again, which will roll two dice, because we can see the top monster has a strength value of two, and this friendship ability rolls dice equal to that strength value. Now, as long as we get at least one four or Rat Queen side, we will deal two damage to a monster in Hana's gate. So let's see how we do, and we got one Rat Queen side, so that is a success. That is going to deal two damage. And this goblin is the only monster there. It has three health and one wound already, so that two damage will be enough to defeat it. That means it looks like two coins are going to be distributed amongst D and Hana. After considering the options, I think we're just going to give Hana both of these coins, which means she has three, Violent has three, and D over here just has one. The final thing we have to do for this friendship action is to place this token down, and I think let's put it over there. The armor is certainly nice, but by putting this onto the strength track, it looks like D will immediately add plus one to all of their strength-based attacks for the rest of the game. In fact, at the moment, D does have one of those attacks on her card. 
although when we focus back out on the board, we do not have a way to use this. Unfortunately, there is one monster over here that needed one more wound to be defeated, and we could have used this at one point when I believe D was over here, but D is way over there now, so we could spend this to move, or we could just not use it at all, and we will then be forced to discard this later on in the round. In this case, I figure we may as well use this to move. That will put D over here, which leaves her more flexible for move actions later on in the game. Well, once we've reached the point where everyone decides they have no more actions to perform, that will bring the action phase to a close, and then we can move into the fourth phase of the round, which is called the regroup phase. The first thing we do for this phase is discard any cards that we still have in our hands into our discard piles, and then all players can simultaneously use their coins in order to purchase upgrades that are specific to their Rat Queen. Now the cheapest upgrade available for everyone is 3 coins, and unfortunately that means D does not have enough coins to do any upgrades, but Violet and Hana do have enough money for that, so let's see what they do. Let's begin over here with Hana, and as you can see, all of her upgrades are face up over here for reference. Now the cost to upgrade into a card is the coin that shows up in the bottom right of the cards, and as you can see, all of Hana's cost 3 or 4 coins. Now let's use these three coins, and I think we are going to purchase this card here. We could have purchased any of the other three cost cards if we wanted to, we're just happening to take the top one. That one is called Magical Laziness, and if we look down at the bottom, it says we can add two additional dice to every card that you play until the end of the round. Remember, lots of these cards cause dice to be rolled, and frequently every die has a chance of dealing damage, so this could drastically improve the damage output of Hana as we go on in the game, at least when she has this card. Now speaking of that, this newly purchased card is going to go face down onto the top of her deck, which means she is guaranteed to draw that during the next preparation phase. After adding one card, we now need to bring balance back to this deck because you are never allowed to have more than nine cards. The way this works is you are going to look through the discard pile and find one card and permanently remove it from the game. Now we can look at all of these options here and... I'm tempted to get rid of Let Me Handle It. Uh, this one does not have any attacks baked into it, but of course, uh, Hana's friendship ability is quite powerful, so adding those tokens down is something that we do not want to disregard. You know, I think, overall, maybe we should get rid of Versatile. It is nice having that flexibility, but I'm not sure we're going to be wanting Hana to do these strength-based attacks. And we have other cards like Evocar Rafika, which does that special ability as well as other things. Drawing extra cards is also a good thing, so yeah, I think this is the one that we get rid of. We could get rid of Leap Attack, but that also adds these friendship tokens down, and I do like prioritizing that. So, Versatile is going to be removed from the game, and Hana once again has exactly 9 cards within her overall deck. Now, at the same time Hana was shopping, Violet is as well. She has 3 coins, and her upgrades range in cost from 3 all the way down to 5. Now, Hana only has one three-cost card, so if she wants to spend these right now, that is the one she has to take, and she is fine with that. So she is going to spend these three coins, and then the card that she is going to upgrade into is Family You Can Rely On. Now, this is a special type of card. You can see it is called an ally, and this is Berry Blackforge. Now, allies are a different type of card from any that we've seen so far because we never actually add them into our deck. Instead, we add them to one of the four gates, and their ability will apply towards that gate until they are removed. Allies are only removed when you put new allies down to these gates, so it's good to try and spread these out as much as possible. With that in mind, let's focus in on this card, and it says that queens at the gate that this is associated with may discard a card to perform the following actions in any order. That one lets them place a friendship token, and the other one lets them move. Remember, you can always spend one card to do a move action, so this card lets you gain that move action and lets you put a friendship token down, which of course can make you very versatile, as other players can use it to move you back to that spot, and then of course you can activate the powerful friendship abilities. So we can add this to any gate, and I think we'll associate it with gate number two. We finished purchasing that ally, and it is worth noting that when you buy an ally, you do not remove any cards from your deck. The reason for that being you never add those allies into your deck, and you always need to have 9 cards overall within your deck, your discard pile, and your hand. At this point, we are all done shopping, so we can move to the next step of the regroup phase, where we are going to take all of the undefeated monsters, and their wounds are going to be discarded back to the supply, and then the monsters themselves are going to invade Palisade. The way we do this is we can place the invading monsters up at the top of the board, and if, after invading, we have eight or more monsters on the invasion line, at that moment, we will immediately summon the big bat. 
Remember, that normally happens once we have gone through this entire deck, but that can happen early if we do not deal with these monsters quickly enough and they overrun Palisade. The longer we stall bringing out the big bad, the better, because once that happens, the number of monsters that we have defeated throughout the game will be our end game clock, and the big bad will use our defeated monsters to attack us, and if they run through that entire deck, then the game will end with our defeat. So we want to wait as long as possible to summon the big bad and to defeat as many of these monsters as we can. It was certainly a shame we were not able to defeat this one up here. Now, obviously, we are not summoning the big bad because we have one invading monster, not eight, and I will describe the details of summoning the big bad later on in the tutorial. Well, the regroup phase is over, so that has finished the first round of the game, and now we can move into a new round where we begin with a preparation phase. The first thing that we do is deal out four new monsters going from the left to the right across the board. The first one is easy, and that is an imp. The second one is easy, and that is a cultist. The third one is a medium monster, and that is an ogre. And as you can see, there is more going on to this card than the other cards that we've seen so far. This one right here says that as a special effect, if this monster rolls one or more fours, then it deals one damage to each queen at its gate. You can see there's a little plus one damage over there to show that. The last monster is also medium, and it is going to be a goose whelp. Uh, now that one says as a special ability, if this monster rolls one or more fours, it moves one gate to the right. Fortunately for us, it looks like that one is already at the rightmost gate, so if that activated, it would not move anymore. Next up, each player can draw three cards from the top of their deck. After that, we can activate any preparation cards that we have in our hands. It looks like Violet has one and D has one over here. And let's start with D's. This one is called Foresight, and it says we can move a monster at D's gate to any other gate, and then D can draw one card. Now, this works out great for us, because as you can see, this cultist is at gate number two, which is the same spot as two rat queens. The cultist has a strength of two, which means during the monster phase, it would roll two dice, trying to damage everyone. And if we just move this cultist over here or onto a different gate, then that will change what it's going to attack. Now, let's put this on the third gate so that it doesn't attack any of the queens. And then D can draw one more card to replace that. And this is a Hang On Love, which we've seen already. It lets D place a friendship token down onto any gate and then perform a movement. Over here, Violet also has a preparation card, and it's a Shield Maiden, which we saw in the first round. And I think let's go ahead and use it. It says until the end of the round, all queens at Violet's gate have plus one armor. And now Violet can draw one card or move. And if we move, we could send Violet over here so that uh, Hana would have one additional armor. That would potentially stop Hana from taking damage over here. Hana's armor is at one already, and this imp does roll just one die, though. So another thing that we could do is just replace this with another card by drawing a new one, uh, not helping Hana out particularly, but giving uh, Violet more options to potentially do some damage to some of these tougher monsters. And I think that is what we are going to do. Uh, sorry about that, Hana. We are going to have Violet draw a card. That will come from the top of her deck, and she only has one card left. It's worth noting, if you ever go to draw a card and you don't have any in your deck, then you will shuffle up your discard pile to make a new draw deck. Well, it's now time for the monster phase, where monsters at each of the gates will attack queens at that same gate. We always start from the left and move to the right, and over here, this imp is going to attack Hana. Now, the imp has a strength of one, which means it is going to roll one die, and as you can see, Hana's armor is currently one. This friendship token was placed on that row, but it did not actually change the armor amount. That won't happen until Hana puts another friendship marker up there. Now, this means in order to do a damage, the imp must roll a two or higher. So let's see how it does, and it got a two. Well, two is unfortunately higher than one, so that means Hana is once again going to take a wound. Now, before we move on, I would like to discuss what happens once a rat queen takes a number of wounds equal to or exceeding their health. When that happens, they are knocked down, but not out, and they must then reset and recenter themselves. Now, the way this works is all of the wounds will be removed, so the Rat Queen will go back up to their maximum health, but then, unfortunately, all of their friendship tokens on their board will be removed. In addition to that, if the Queen has any friendship tokens currently over here on the Palisade board, then those are also going to be removed, and then, as an extra penalty, the top two monsters from this deck will be revealed and placed immediately up top, which will push us closer to fighting the Big Bad. Now, if this happens to a Queen when we are fighting the Big Bad, then instead we would discard two of the monster cards from the Big Bad's action deck, and I'll talk about the details of how that works later on in the video. 
After we've done all of that, the Queen can continue to play the game as they were, although they will likely be in a weaker state due to losing those friendship tokens. Well, this monster is done, and now we can see that there is no monster at this gate because D was able to move one over, so there is no attack here, and none of these three monsters attack because there are no queens to target on those spots. This means the monster phase is done, so we can now start the action phase of the round. Now, I think let's begin over here with Hana, much like we did in the first round of the game, and the first thing we want her to do is use this magical laziness card. That says that she will add two additional dice to every card that they play for the rest of the round. After that, let's use Envocar Incendius to use Hana's special ability. Once again, that lets her roll X dice, which in this case will be 1 plus 2 more due to this magical laziness, and then each of those dice will deal 1 damage to every monster and queen at the gates that match the number. So, 3 dice can be rolled, and we are hoping to not see any 2s. Alright, we got a 3 and a 4. The 0 is unfortunately going to be a miss, but the 4 will do 1 damage over here, and the 3 will do 1 damage over here, hitting both of these monsters. Overall, I think that was a great result, especially considering we did not get any 2s. This means the Goose Whelps need just 1 more damage to be defeated, the same goes for this Cultist, but this Ogre needs 4 more damage to be defeated, that one has a ton of health. At this point, Hana has one card left, and no one else has done anything, but I think let's just have her use this. This one is called Magic, Nothing It Can't Do, and this will let her do a Strength-based attack, which is going to have a plus zero modifier. Normally, she would just roll one die, but because of Magical Laziness, she will roll three. Now, each of these dice will do one damage if they meet or exceed the armor of a monster at her gate, and this imp has an armor of one, so we realistically want to see two of these dice be a one or greater in order to defeat that imp. So let's see how she does, and that is going to be fine. That actually inflicts three wounds, and we only needed to inflict two. So this imp is defeated, and then Hana is going to gain two coins because she is the only queen at that gate, so there are no other queens that can take the coins. Well, it looks like Hana is actually done for this round, and we have a bunch of cards that D and Violet can also use. Now, out here, there is still an ogre that needs to take quite a bit of damage. Although that ogre in particular does have just one armor, so it's quite easy to do damage to it. Now with that in mind, I think let's move D over here so that she can perform her Lover's Bite special. That's only successful if she rolls a die that meets or exceeds the armor of one monster in that spot, and if it's successful, it deals one damage to every monster in that location and every monster in an adjacent spot. So I think that ogre is a prime target for the Lover's Bite to deal potentially three damage. Now D does need to move over here, and there is this ally at her current gate. That says D could discard any card in order to do a move action, as well as place a friendship token down. Remember, normally when you discard a card, you just get the move action. But I think let's actually use D's Hang On Love card. This is a little bit better than that ally's action, because this lets D put the friendship token down into any of the gates, instead of the gate where she currently is, and this also gives a move action. So let's perform this now. And then I think we should put the friendship token into gate number one, which will let Hana do a friendship action at some point during this round. Uh, it's always good to try and have each of the queens do that one friendship action so that they can get stronger, and Hana does need some healing. Now D does have a move associated with this action, and she is going to move over here. And then let's have her use Lover's Bite. Once again, that will let her roll one die, and if the value on that die meets or exceeds the armor of any of the monsters at her gate, then she will do one damage to all monsters there, and one damage to all monsters in an adjacent gate. As I pointed out before, this ogre's armor is one, so we just need to not get a zero, and if that happens, this will be a very powerful attack, and we got the queen side. Now this is an automatic success, so the Lover's Bite is going to happen. This means we will inflict one damage to every monster at this gate, and every monster at an adjacent gate, and that's obviously going to be over here. Now, at first blush, this looks great, because that has defeated both of these monsters, but you'll note that these uh, Goose Whelps gave four coins, and the coins only go to a queen that is currently at that gate. Since there is no queen at that gate, those four coins are going to be lost, but defeating the monster is still a good thing for our overall goals. Now this cultist is also defeated, and that makes three coins, and all three of those coins will go to D, because she is currently the only one there. So let's place those over here. And now let's have D perform a friendship action. As you can see, there is a Violet friendship token over here, so she's going to call on Violet's friendship. This means Violet is going to immediately move to that gate. 
and then perform her friendship ability. This is called Shield Bash, and it says that Violet is going to take one damage, then she will heal another queen at this gate, and then she will deal one damage to a monster at this gate. So unfortunately, Violet is going to take one damage for doing this. But she's also going to do one damage to this ogre, and she would heal one damage for a queen at this gate, but at this moment, none of these queens have any damage to heal. After that, D can place this friendship token down onto her board, and let's place it over here to add plus two to all of these strength-based attacks. Now, at this point, there is just one monster out here, and it needs two wounds to be defeated, but I think we want to hold off on inflicting those potential wounds, because as soon as all the monsters are gone, the action phase will be over, and I would like to try and get some more friendship actions in to strengthen our queens. With that in mind, let's have Hana do a friendship action. As you can see, D's token is over here, so that is going to bring D onto gate number one. And then D can use her Healing Touch Friendship ability, which lets her roll three dice, and for every four and queen side they roll, a queen at D's gate will heal twice. Each of these has a one-third chance of hitting for us, and it looks like two of them hit. So that is four health that we can heal, although there is just one wound right now that can be targeted, so this is going to be healed up, and Hana is back to full health. After that, Hana can place a friendship token down onto her board, and let's put it here so that her armor has now gone from one up to two. This also means we are one friendship token away from Hana unlocking her special ability, which means her Invokar and Sendia's power will not hurt other queens. So far, that hasn't hurt us in this play, but it is definitely something to keep in mind, considering how chaotic her spells can be. Well, at this point, the only queen who has not done a friendship action is Violet. In fact, Violet hasn't actually done anything during this action round so far. Now, she has this wholesale slaughter card, which could do two damage, and that is what we would need to defeat this ogre, and she would have pretty good odds to make that happen. Now, one thing Violet could do right now is Warcry. That would place a friendship token down at her gate, and she would heal one wound off of her board. But of course, we would like Violet to perform a friendship action, and we could probably work things so that it is a D friendship action, which will most likely heal this wound off as well. Now, at the moment, there is only one friendship token out here unclaimed, and that is for D, and it is adjacent, so I think let's make this happen. Let's use to the bloodletting. That lets us place a Violet friendship token down into this gate, and then Violet can move once. So Violet can move over here, and then let's have Violet perform a friendship action with this D friendship token. So D is going to move all the way over here to gate number four, and then once again, roll three dice, and if we have any fours or queen sides, that will heal twice. There is one four, so that is going to heal up to two wounds, and one wound is here, so that is gone, and Violet is back up to full health. Next up, we can place this friendship token down, and if we put it here, that's not going to increase Violet's overall armor, but it would put us one away from her unlocking her special armor ability. Now, if we put it down here, that would not increase our strength modifier, but it would put us one away from getting that even better. And I think, considering these two options at the moment, let's push towards this special ability. That says that when a monster attacks or deals damage to Violet, that monster takes one damage, and I like the idea of monsters taking damage when they are trying to deal it. Well, at this moment, everyone has taken a friendship action, and this ogre still needs to be dealt with. Uh, now, D has one card, and it lets her do a strength-based attack, but there is no monster here, and Violet does have two cards. So I think let's just have D use this Goddess Enough card for a movement. That way, D can go here, and this is a more versatile position out here on the board compared to being at the end. After that, let's use Warcry to move Violet. It would be great to put a friendship token down, but I think we want the move more, so we do not do any of these things. We simply use this card for a movement, and Violet can go over there. And finally, it's time for the Wholesale Slaughter. This is Violet's special ability, and it says she can roll two dice, and then for every four or queen side she gets, she will deal two damage to one monster at Violet's gate. Two damage is all that we need to defeat this ogre at the gate, so we just need to hit on one, and we got one. Nice. So that is going to deal two wounds. Two damage will hit this ogre, and that will bring it up to five, which is enough to defeat it, and then five coins can be distributed between all of the queens at this gate. Well, D has four coins right now, and Violet has none, but of course Violet has already done an upgrade, and D has not. With that in mind, I think let's still have Violet take four of these, and we'll put one of these over here for D. All right, there are no monsters left, so the action phase is over, and now we can move into the regroup phase. If we had any cards in our hand, we would have to discard those, and now each of us can spend our coins to do upgrades. Unfortunately for Hana, she has two coins, and her cheapest card is three, so she's not going to be able to upgrade anything. But Violet does have four coins, and she can definitely use that to upgrade. Now, she has three cards currently that she can afford. 
And this top one says that once played, until the end of the round, all queens at Violet's Gate as well as adjacent gates add one die to every attack and special they play. This one right here says you can perform these three things in any order, which is a strength attack of one die, a strength attack of two dice, as well as a move. The third option happens during preparation, and it says until the end of the round, all queens at Violet's Gate have plus one armor, and when this is played, Violet gets a move as well as a card draw. That might sound familiar because it is essentially an upgraded version of Shield Maiden, which does the same thing except you draw a card or you move instead of doing both. The one that jumps out to me the most is this one in the middle. I like how flexible that is, so I think let's have Violet upgrade into that. It's called For Blood and Glory. That is going to cost all four of Violet's coins, and then this card will be placed on top of her deck. After adding that card, we of course have to remove one from Dee's discard pile, and I think we might just get rid of Eat Metal. This is a relatively weak attack compared to some of the other flexible cards that she has, and I was considering removing the Warcry. That is the one that lets her heal one damage, but of course she deals one damage to herself every time she performs her friendship action, so I think having a heal in her deck is a good idea. So let's get rid of Eat Metal. Now over here, D has five coins, and that is enough to upgrade almost every card. This bottom one does cost six. So with that in mind, let's take a closer look. This top card says that when it's played, D can choose two different queens, and they each place friendship tokens down at each other's gate, which is a great way to add more tokens down, as well as flexibility, as well as the ability to use those powerful friendship actions. This next one here is a preparation card, and it says that each queen may move to any gate, which allows us to be flexible at dodging potential damage coming in, as well as setting ourselves up for more effective action phases later in the round. After that, this card simply lets D do a strength-based attack with two of the dice instead of one, and each die has a possibility of doing a damage, and at the moment D has upgraded her strength-based attacks twice, so that is certainly tempting. This one right here lets her do the Lover's Bite action, rolling two dice, and if any of these dice meet or exceed the armor of one of those monsters, then the ability will go off. Right now, she only has the ability to do this action with one die, so doubling the number of dice makes it more likely that we get to pull off that powerful effect. After that, this card lets D do a two dice strength attack, or she can draw one card and any other queen can draw one card, and obviously drawing two cards overall for playing one is a good effect. The final one she can perform is this, and it lets her do a Lover's Bind action with two dice, which looks like that one. However, this one happens during the preparation phase, which is obviously before the monster phase happens, which is why it does cost one more gold. After considering all of these, I think let's go for this one. It does cost one more coin than that one there, but it gives us a nice flexibility where we can either do a strong strength-based attack, or we can draw some more cards to give D more options as well as another queen. So that is going to cost four out of these five coins, and then this can be placed on top of her deck. After adding that card, we of course have to remove one card from her discard pile, and she's got quite a few good options going on here, and I think the one I'm most tempted to remove is Goddess Enough. We have a couple of these already, and we just added a more powerful strength-based attack that has some flexibility, and these other cards can be great. I don't want to lose any abilities to try and perform Lover's Bite, and her adding Friendship Tokens down is very good, considering that uh, this one lets her put Friendship Tokens on any gate, and D is the primary way that we are going to heal damage, as the monsters get harder as the game goes on. So, I think this is the card we are going to remove. Well, we are now all done purchasing cards, and the last thing we would do is add any monsters from the gates up here to the invasion track, but fortunately we were able to defeat all of them, so we don't add any of them. That means this round has come to a close, and at this point I'm going to fast forward through the game until we reach the final chapter, and that happens when the big bad comes into play. Now the big bad is going to be summoned from two different conditions. The first is if we go to place monsters down and we don't have enough in this deck to do that, and the second condition is if an eighth monster is placed up here on the invasion track. Well, we've just finished the fifth round of the game, and at the start of the sixth round, you'll notice there are no monsters in the deck. That means we can't play any out, and that also means that it's now time for the final chapter. The final chapter starts with a big bad enemy coming into play, and we will only win the game if we are able to defeat that enemy. Now, as you can see, there are three big bads here, and each of them have a specific type. This is magic, and that one is winged. 
You may have noticed as we were playing through the game that the monsters also had these three icons. And now is the time where these icons come into play. What we have to do is look at all of the monsters that invaded Palisade. As you can see, five made it through. And then the type of monster that has the most of that icon will dictate which of the three big bads we are going to be going against. As you can see, there were two of the magic type that broke through, one of the winged type, and two of the melee type. And when there is a tie, then we as a group get to decide which of those two big bads we want to go against. In this case, we can either fight against Troll Girlfriend or Nirigai. Between these two, I think I would prefer to fight against Nirigoth, so that is going to be the one we select, and now all of the monsters that invaded can be removed from the game. Then we can place the big bad board on the table, and then find the miniature for this big bad, and then place this onto a skull location on the board. Up to this point, these haven't mattered at all, but as you can see, the big bads are so large, they actually occupy two gates at the same time. So, at the start, Nirigoth is in gates two and three simultaneously. Now, the big bad is only ever going to move from one of these skull locations to another, and we'll see how it moves later on. The next thing that we do is take the deck of monsters that we have defeated, and then we are going to shuffle this up, and then this is going to create the action deck for the big bad that we are fighting against. The next thing I'd like to point out is the fact that these big bads have a variable amount of hit points depending on the player count. We have a three-player game happening, so that means it will take 40 wounds to defeat Nirigoth. You'll also note that Nirigoth has three armor, so that means we have to roll three or higher on our dice when we attack Nirigoth to do a damage. Now that the big bad has been summoned, we can continue with the preparation phase, and each player is going to draw three cards from the top of their deck. And it looks like Violet has just one card, so that means she has to shuffle up her discard pile to make a new draw pile. After that, we can perform preparation effects, and it looks like we have three of them currently. Let's start over here with Violet. As you can see, this shield wall is new. It says that until the end of the round, all queens at Violet's gate have plus one armor, and then Violet draws one card and gets to move. This is effectively an upgraded version of the Shield Maiden. So she can draw another card, and she can move, although I don't think we want to move her from her current position. Next up, let's have D use Foresight. This says she can move a monster at D's gate to any other gate and then draw a card, although right now the only monster, which is the big bad, is not at her gate, so she'll simply draw one card. That is a major blessing, and then this one says I've got your back, and this says she can move, then drop a friendship token, and then draw one more card. This also says that until the end of the round, queens at D's gate who take damage suffer one less damage. Well, let's have her move here and then drop a friendship token on that spot. And then when she goes to draw a card, it is another preparation card. Now this one says you dare go after us. And the effect allows each of the queens to move to any gate on the board. Well, currently Violet is increasing the armor of all queens by one at her gate, and D is lowering the amount of damage taken by all queens at her gate, so I think we should probably have all of the queens together, and maybe we should move all of them that is farther away from the big bad to make it less likely that we take damage in the upcoming big bad phase. Yeah, I think that's what we are going to do. Well, the preparation phase is done, so now it's time for the first big bad phase of the game. This replaces the monster phase that we saw earlier on in the game. Now the way this phase works is we are going to draw three cards from the top of this action deck for the big bad, and after revealing each card, the type of card that that monster is is going to dictate what action the big bad is going to do. Now if we try to draw a card from this deck and there aren't any left, then that is how we lose the game, and as you can see we have... 15 cards in this deck, so if we are drawing three at a time, then we have five rounds to defeat this monster. Now remember, it might be less than that, because every time a queen takes wounds equal to their health, we are going to not only clear off their friendship tokens, but we will also discard two cards from the top of this deck, which will push us even closer towards defeat. Well, let's start the big bad phase by drawing the top card, and this monster shows the winged symbol, which means that is going to be the effect that happens. When we focus over here, that ability is called Tentacles from Beyond, and Nurgoth is going to roll a die, and then move once towards the gate that is rolled, and then they are going to deal 3 damage to every single queen that is not engaged with Nurgoth, which means they aren't in a gate that is adjacent to that big bad. Hmm, with that in mind, maybe we should not have moved away from the big bad, instead we probably should have tried to stay close, but either way, let's see what happens here, and a 2 was rolled. 
that means Nergoth is going to move towards this gate, so it's going to go onto this location. And now every queen not on these spots are going to suffer three damage. So it looks like that did end up working out for us. Well, that was one card, and we have to draw three of them. This next one shows the melee symbol. And that effect is called Inky Darkness. It says that Nergoth is going to roll three dice, and then each queen must suffer two damage or remove one friendship token from their board for each die with a value greater than their armor. So let's focus out, and then the Inky Darkness is going to roll three dice. Now, each of these could potentially inflict the damage. As you can see, Hana has an armor value of two, but of course, everyone currently has plus one armor because everyone is with Violet, who currently has this shield wall up. That means Hana has three armor and would only be hit by a four, and there is a four. The same can be said over here for D because they are at two plus one or three, but then Violet is at three plus one or four, so Violet is not going to be hit by any of these. So for that hit, Hana could take two damage or lose one of her friendship tokens. And I think we are going to have Hana suffer two wounds. And then over here, it looks like D already has three wounds. And if she takes five more, then that would knock her down. Because of that, I think we will have D lose a friendship token instead of suffering two wounds. This one can be lost and it won't even affect her overall armor level. At this point, we've drawn two cards, and now it's time for a third, and that one shows the magic symbol, which means Nirgoth's Existential Dread ability will now be performed. When we focus in, it says they are going to roll one die, and then compare each die against the armor of every queen. If at least one success is rolled against a queen, then the queen suffers damage equal to the number of open friendship token slots on their board. Currently, Hana has one open slot, Violet has one, and D has two, and that is the amount of damage they would take if this one die is able to get over the armor. So, let's roll it, and it is a Rat Queen side. Remember, this is always good for us, so in this case, that is a miss, and no one will suffer damage from this Existential Dread. It is interesting to note that that Inky Darkness can cause us to lose friendship, and then Existential Dread will cause us to take damage because of those lost friendships, so we have to keep that in mind as we continue to battle Nurigoth. Well, the big bad phase is essentially over, although I just realized that Violet's special ability is active. Now that says that when a monster attacks or deals damage to Violet, that monster will take one damage, and the big bad attacked her with the Inky Darkness as well as the Existential Dread abilities. For each of those, Violet's ability should have gone off, so that means Nurigoth should have taken one damage twice, which means we only need to inflict 38 more damage in order to defeat the big bad and win the game. Alright, it's now time for the action phase, and before we actually play any of these cards, I would like to focus on the new allies that we have out here on the board. You'll notice every single one of the gates has an ally now, and I haven't actually explained how three of these allies work yet. Over at gate one, we have Love Burns Bright, and this ally says at the start of each round, queens at or adjacent to this gate draw one extra card and then discard one card. Now, unfortunately, I obviously forgot about that effect when we were in the preparation phase, so let's just go ahead and fix that real quick. Over here, Hana would have drawn this card, which is Magical Laziness, and then would have to discard one of these four. Now remember, Magical Laziness adds two dice to all of her dice rolls for the rest of the round. Then there is Retaliation, which is a new card. That one says she can do a strength-based attack with two dice, and if Hana took damage earlier in that round, then she actually rolls four dice. After that, there is Evokar Shakarius, which lets her do these three things in any order, and then Incendius Maximus, which lets her do her special with three dice. Now, retaliation can be very effective if Hana takes damage, and of course we should have made this decision before the big bad round where Hana could have taken damage, and I think considering all of these options, it's most likely we would have discarded this one. So, that one will go into the discard pile. Then over here, Violet would have drawn this Warcry card, and likely would have discarded this one instead of any of the others. Lastly, D had these three cards before they started using several of them, including another one in her discard pile. So I think in order to fix this, we are just going to ignore the fact that D would have drawn that card, and I won't make that mistake again in the future. Sorry about that. The next new ally is over here at gate three. This is Bluebirds Redbirds. Now that says that queens at this gate may discard a card to perform the following actions in any order. This shows a move action as well as a strength attack using two dice. The final new ally we have is Death Shower, and they are associated with gate number four. That says queens at or adjacent to this gate, performing special actions, may reroll one die. 
Well, let's now start the action phase, and much like we've seen before, let's begin with Hana so that we can see what happens with her chaotic special ability. First things first, she is going to use Magical Laziness. That is going to add two dice to every one of her rolls for this round. And then after that, she is going to use Incendius Maximus. Now this lets her do her Evocar Incendius action with three dice, and she can do these in any order. Remember this effect lets her roll X dice, and in this case that is going to be three, and she will deal one damage to every monster and queen at the gate matching the spot rolled. At least that's normally what would happen, but she has unlocked her special ability, which means queens will never take damage from this special ability. So she is going to roll three plus two dice, and we are obviously hoping to see ones, twos, and the rat queen side, which will let us decide which gate is hit. So let's see how we do, and overall that is great. This zero is not going to do anything, but all of these ones will do one damage, and this two will also do a damage because the big bad is at both gates one and two. So that is four damage total. Now these wound tokens can be flipped from the one to the three side to show two wounds being added, and we can do that twice, so that is six total wounds now. And then of course this lets her move and lay a friendship token down, and I think it makes sense to try and move her over here, because this ally will let her re-roll her special attack in the future, and we are hoping to do more of that as the game goes on. Next up, let's have Hana do a friendship ability and use this token right here for D. That means D is going to head over here, and remember this ability lets her roll three dice, and every four or queen side that is rolled is going to heal two damage. In this case, we got two of those, so that is going to heal up to four damage. And she can use one of those to heal two wounds off of Hana, and then the other one to heal two wounds off of herself because she is indeed a queen at that gate. So this three will become a one. After that, we can place this friendship token down there, and Hana is completely full up on these friendship tokens now, which means it might make sense to start discarding some of these when that inky darkness attack comes in so that Hana does not take the two damage. After that, I think let's keep on with Hana, and let's use Evokar Shikarius. That lets her do her special ability with two dice, and then of course she adds two more for this magical laziness. So that is four dice, and we are looking for ones, twos, and the Rat Queen side, and we got one, two, and the other ones aren't going to do anything. So unfortunately, this will only inflict one wound. That means Nerigoth is up to seven wounds total. And then we could have Hana move and drop another one of these friendship tokens down. Remember, her friendship ability lets her do damage. So having these be spread out across the board is good to try and track down the big bad wherever it is and continue to do as much damage as possible. Well, I think Hana is essentially done with everything she could do on this round, and we can certainly now do actions with the other queens. Now, I suppose that's not necessarily true. Uh, D over here has Major Blessing, and that could either be a strength-based attack with two dice, or it could have D draw a card, and one other queen could draw a card. So we could use that to have Hana draw another card. Technically, her magical laziness is still out, and if she drew a card to deal damage, that would add two more dice to it. So I think that is actually going to be a good idea. So we will use Major Blessing. Now D gets to draw one card, and currently she does not have a deck, so we can reshuffle up her discard pile. And then she can draw a card. That is Lover's Bite, which is similar to the one that we've seen before, but this lets her roll two dice instead of one. Then we will have Hana draw a card, and it's her last one in the deck, and unfortunately it does not actually have an action on it. We were hoping it would have another one of those special action icons, but it looks like that didn't happen for us. But this does let her drop a friendship token and move, which will help get her farther over to the right, where there is an ally to help her re-roll dice when she does special attacks in the future. That being said, I do think Hana is probably going to be pulled back over here with friendship actions, so I think maybe we should just do that now. I know we're being very Hana-focused right now, but that's fine. You can split things up if you want to, or just see the capacity of one of these queens before moving on to others. Now, in particular, I think let's have Violet do a friend action, and we will have this activate on a Hana friendship token. That is going to go down over there, and Hana will go back over here, and then perform her friendship ability. Remember, this is the Necreus Corvin Rouse, and it lets her roll dice equal to the strength of the creature on top of the discard pile, and if she gets at least one four or a rat queen face, then she will deal two damage to a monster at that gate. Now, technically, we should leave this discard pile over here, because these are the cards that the big bad used for its activation, and the top one over here does have a three, so that means that this friendship activation will roll three dice, and we have three opportunities to get that four or the rat queen side. So here we go, and <laughs> it looks like we hit on all three of them, but we just needed to hit on one. That means Hana's friendship ability will deal two damage to the big bad, which means it now has nine wounds total. 
you know what? That was so effective. Let's do it again. Uh, D is over here, and let's have her do a friendship ability once again using Hana because Hana does the most damage out of all of us with these friendship actions. So this token will go over here. The top card still has a three, so we are going to roll three dice and again hope for a Rat Queen side or a four. In this case, we got just one of those, but again, we needed just one, so that is two more damage. Of course, Hana is also going to move over here to gate number two. Two damage brings the big bad up to 11 wounds. And now let's have D use her godlike twist of fate. This she could use to move, or she could use it to choose two queens, and they each put friendship tokens on each other's gate. And I think this is what we should do. Let's have D and Violet be targeted for this. That means that a Violet friendship token will go down where D is, and there already was one of those, but the main reason to do this was to put a D friendship token down over there. That way we could potentially use this to heal up in the future. I think it's definitely good to keep these D friendship tokens down to try and keep our wounds in check. Next up, let's have D perform Lover's Bite. That lets her roll two dice, and if either of them match or exceed the armor of a target at her gate, she will do one damage to everything at that gate and one adjacent gate. Now we know that Nirigoth has three armor, so that means we need a three or better on either of these dice. So let's roll two of them, and we did not get it at all. Well, that's unfortunate. No damage will be dealt there. Next up, let's have Violet do some damage. As you can see, she has a plus three modifier for her strength-based attacks, and we can use Eat More Metal right now. As you can see, the big bad is in an adjacent gate, so this is possible, and that lets her do a strength-based attack with three dice. Now, once again, Nerigoth has a armor value of three, but with her plus three, that means even a zero would be a three, which means no matter what, she's guaranteed to hit with all three of these dice, and that is indeed going to do three damage to the big bad. So we can put a three over there, and then it's time for her to use her Wholesale Slaughter ability. Remember, this lets her roll two dice, and if either are a four or a Rat Queen side, then she will deal X damage based off of the card. This one here will deal three damage, and that one will deal two. Let's start with this one, so we can roll two dice, and it looks like we got one Rat Queen side, so that is going to do three damage. So we can put another three over there. And then the other one is going to do two damage if this is successful. So let's see how we do. And this was not. We did not get a four or a Rat Queen side. So unfortunately, this will not deal two damage. At this point, the only card we have left is the Let Me Handle It. It has a dropping of a friendship token and then a move. And I think, well, if we do this, then we could get closer over here to this reroll for the special. Or we could not move with this and then gain the ability of this ally, which lets us draw an extra card and then discard one. And that might actually be better. So I think we aren't going to use this card at all. That means we are done with the action phase and we can move into the regroup phase. This card is going to go into the discard pile. And then players can spend any coins they have to upgrade, but the only person with coins is Violet, and two coins is not enough to buy anything. So that means we can look up here, and during the final chapter, there won't be monsters to add to the invasion track like we've been doing before, which means instead the round is over, and now we can start the next round of the game with a preparation phase. Now let's take a look up here, and as you can see, we managed to do a whopping 17 damage to the big bad in that round. As you can see, those upgraded cards that we have can be very effective when you work together to defeat those monsters and gain the coins earlier on in the game. So, as I said, we are now ready for the next round of the final chapter, but at this point, I'm going to stop playing through the game. We've seen how we can inflict quite a bit of damage on the big bad, and we've seen just how nasty those effects from the big bad can be. We were able to avoid a lot of that damage, but if it moves in such a way to deal a bunch of damage from the tentacles from beyond, that could really cause us problems. Also, if we don't have those armor benefits and the dice go wrong, we could lose a bunch of damage or friendship from the inky darkness, which will enable us to take even more damage from the existential dread, so things can certainly spiral in a bad direction when fighting against Nerigoth. Now, once again, if we ever go to draw a card from this deck and there are none left, then that will cause us to lose the game, and every time one of the Rat Queens takes wounds equal to their health amount, that will cause two of these cards to be discarded. Right now, we haven't taken that much damage, but it's possible to take quite a bit based off of how these cards go and based off of the cards that we draw on our turns. At this point, I think we are a little bit advantaged to win this battle against Nerigoth based off of the great upgrades that we have picked up, but again, things could certainly go wrong for us as we continue to fight against the big bad. Well, at this point, I do believe I've taught just about all of the rules to the game, which means this tutorial has come to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Rat Queens.
As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.